Count one is guilty. The former president has been found guilty. Are we going to actually elect a convicted felon uh, to the presidency? I think that would have certainly surprised the founding fathers, I'll put it that way. I'm Dan Farber. I'm a professor of law at UC Berkeley. So Trump has been uh, convicted in New York state court, at least for some people, that's going to raise questions about whether uh, he is fit to become president of the United States again. I think at the same time, we have to remember there are other cases pending against him. The issues in those cases generally are going to bear on his, what people think about his fitness for office. Uh, but there are also legal issues that are really important and could shape the future of the presidency. Uh, and one of those is the question of presidential immunity. I published a book about presidential power. We need the president to be powerful, and yet whenever you grant power, you're creating the possibility for abuse. In uh, cases involving uh, the January 6th and the effort to derail the uh, vote of the Electoral College. Trump is claiming that because he was president, he's completely immune uh, to any kind of uh, liability. The Supreme Court's hearing that issue. If they give presidents that kind of get out of jail card, it could have a real effect on the risks that we take uh, when we elect somebody for the presidency. We can't just say presidential power is good. We're pretty polarized. You know, most of us think that um, at least one of the last two presidents has been terrible. Yet, we have to make rules that apply to all of them, and we have to make rules that will uh, maintain the integrity of our system of government, and yet at the same time we have to grant power. I'm hopeful that uh, even though we're in unprecedented territory, uh, both the courts and uh, society more generally are able to continue to maintain that balance.